Hello everyone, I am Crawlers and um, well here's a few interesting and uh, dare I say even positive changes to weapons in uh, Battlefield 4 CTE. Now uh, first let me warn you that these changes happened in a, uh, a patch a couple of days ago and I'm admittedly a little bit late to the party. Um, in fact this video is a waste of time for anyone who actually uh, plays and reads CTE patch notes, but, you know, because there are still some people who uh, don't have access to CTE, I will go through these changes and um, give you my opinions on them, uh, you know, if you want to hear them, that is. Of course, none of this would be necessary if DICE didn't, uh, didn't make CTE a premium-only thing, but here we are, I guess. Uh, obviously, some people just don't have CTE because it takes up so much space, uh, so much space on their hard drive. And, you know, even with my two uh, hard drives and one SSD, I'm actually hurting for space myself now. Uh, what with all the games and, you know, recorded footage of, uh, and of course, porn. You know, can't forget the mounds and mounds of pornographic material. I mean, what if tomorrow the internet goes out? I got to have my porn, right? So, whatever, let's get to changes in the guns. Uh, now, obviously, uh, these are only in CTE right now, and uh, as they are being tested and being a prototype change, they may or may not uh, make it over to the vanilla game. But, honestly, these changes are very promising and I hope very much they will make it to the regular uh, Battlefield 4. In fact, you know, some of these are uh, more or less so painfully obvious that I just have to wonder why it took over a year for them to, um, you know, make it into the game. Uh, now, one of these things I mentioned when uh, playing uh, the uh, community map project map in CTE the other day is just how satisfying the mayor's leg was to use. Well, a couple of things actually happened here. Uh, they fixed the extremely satisfying uh, reload sound, that orgasmic metal and metal chink uh, when you slide the bullet into the rifle. It's kind of like the thunk of a Bentley door. It, you know, it, I, I wasn't sure if it was my sound setup yesterday, but I found it extremely satisfying to use. And now that I read the patch notes, I uh, kind of understand why I felt that way. So, you know, now I just reload just for the hell of it, because it sounds so cool. Uh, but uh, one thing I would add is I would increase the overall ammo, ammo stores for the, um, for the mare's leg, because... I seem to miss quite a few shots, and when you, um, with the rate of fire this thing has, you know, you just kind of go through all the ammo stores in a hurry, and I feel like there should be more, more ammo for the, uh, for the mare's leg, as it's, it's pretty good at a distance. It's crap up close, because it has such a, uh, you know, bad hip fire spread, but at a distance it's, you know, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, now, some other sound effects and uh, tracers were fixed, but more importantly, the weapons themselves got a bit of a muzzle velocity buff. And um, before I go into that, the SCAR H, the SVD-12, the M39 EMR, and the Ace 53 SV got a slight reduction in their spread, and the SKS got a slight reduction to the per shot spread increase. Now, uh, the muzzle velocities uh, to the weapons that got buffed are as follows. Uh, the G36C got buffed from 550 to 590 meters a second. The Type 95 LMG got buffed from 540 to 580 meters a second. The Ace 21 got buffed from 440 to 480 meters a second. The Type 88 LMG got buffed from 600 to 670 meters a second. The QBB 951 LMG 
got buffed from 600 to 630 meters a second. The U100 LMG uh, got buffed from 650 to 700 meters a second, which is quite a buff, as you can see. The L96A1 sniper rifle's uh, muzzle velocity got buffed from 580 to a whopping 630 meters a second. Uh, the CSLR4 got a buff from 630 to 670 meters a second. Uh, the SCAR H got a very much deserved muzzle velocity buff from a puny 410 meters a second to a very respectable 500 meters a second. So, you know, it may, will be quite uh, competitive with all the other uh, guns of that type. Uh, the M40A4 uh, sniper rifle, wait, is it the M40A5, I guess, uh, which I... I believe had the worst muzzle velocity of any sniper rifle in the game, uh, got a muzzle velocity buff from 480 meters a second to 520 meters a second, which, uh, needless to say, will make hitting targets at range, especially, you know, moving ones, much easier. Uh, the only problem I can see with these changes is that uh, people who have already developed a muscle memory for these uh, scopes over a year of playing, will now have to relearn everything and, uh, you know, try to remember things uh, uh, from scratch. But for bad players like me, it will make things somewhat uh, better and more enjoyable. But uh, we're not done yet. Uh, the SR2 PDW, which I believe had the worst muzzle velocity of all PDWs outside the AS well, um, I guess, well, maybe because it's, um, you know, forever suppressed, got a small muzzle velocity buff from 310 to 330 meters a second. The UMP-45 got buffed from 320 uh, muzzle velocity to 340 meters a second. Uh, the PP-2000 uh, got buffed from 450 to 490 meters a second. And the JS-2 got buffed from 320 to 350 uh, meters a second muzzle velocity. Now, two weapons also saw their muzzle velocities reduced, namely the MTAR uh, went from 540 to 510 meters a second, and the M4, which went from 580 to 540 meters a second. And, well, now, what do we, uh, what do all these bullet velocities velocity changes mean, you might ask, or rather someone unfamiliar with the game might ask. Well, most obviously a faster bullet makes hitting a target much easier, especially a moving one, right, since the bullet gets there faster. You'd have to lead it less, you'd have to, you know, estimate less, and pretty much have a bit more enjoyment at killing people at range. Uh, but then you might say, well, why weren't these muzzle velocities much higher at the game release? Well, technically speaking, these muzzle velocities in games like this are nearly always much lower than they are in real life because of several things. And, um, you know, this isn't limited to dice games, I'm sure. Uh, this applies to FPS games in general. Uh, game engine limitations, you know, netcode limitations, uh, map and environment sizes, um, all these things come into play, pun intended, uh, when tweaking a weapon's stats. And, uh, frankly, the fun factor is also taken into account. So, you know, things in the game are not necessarily uh, anywhere close to reality, which some people seem to have a bit of trouble uh, grasping. Now, uh, there were also some uh, small changes here and there, but the one that caught my eye was that the reload times uh, match all animations on automatic weapons now. Now, this might seem like a small change to you, but, you know, it's actually not. In fact, uh, syncing what happens in the game world and uh, what you see on screen, uh, the animation, so to speak, is very important in an FPS game, particularly one that uh, wants to be uh, competitive as Battlefield 4, because 
you need to know that what is happening on screen is actually happening in the game at the same time, so you can be uh, consistent with your weapon and kind of develop a uh, muscle memory for it and, you know, get consistent uh, hits every time with it. And uh, this is actually much more evident in Hardline, where the reload animations uh, don't seem to match the actual reloads, which, as I understand it, was done to... Uh, the reload time was extended to so that the third-person animations would look more normal, which I think was a stupid thing to do. And I might be talking out of my ass right now, might not know anything, but that's something that I read somewhere. Uh, but this is extremely annoying, you see. I like to press reload and then immediately ADS uh, when the reload finishes. And, well, in Battlefield 4, I know when that happens, and I have a feel for it. In Hardline, I ADS and, you know, nothing happens for a second or two, because although the reload animation stopped, it's actually behind the curve of what uh, the game engine is actually doing, and in that one or two seconds, I usually get killed. So, uh, extremely annoying, this. And now, some other changes happened also, which I think are quite welcome. Uh, the damage drop-off for the FYJS uh, sniper rifle was increased from 110 to 147.8 meters to uh, improve the one headshot kill range. Uh, the gravity constant was changed for the CS5 bullet and the SKS bullet, so now they drop less over distance namely 6 and 9.81 meters per second per second. And um, as I said, these are in-game variables, so, you know, they have nothing to do with the real world. Uh, some, uh, also some magazine sizes were corrected. The M40A5 uh, now has five rounds per box. Uh, ditto the CSLR4 and the L96A1. Uh, the Scout Elite now has 10 rounds per box. And the QBB951 now has 75 versus, I think it was 100 before. Um, also, the burst fire setting was corrected on the UMP9, the UMP45, the CZ805, and the G36C, which uh, now all fire two bullets per burst. Uh, the number of magazines were increased on the M60E4, the PKP, the M240B, the QBB, the PP2000, SR338, SCAR-H, and the Bulldog. And I think it's quite uh, good that these uh, higher caliber assault rifles like the SCAR-H and the Bulldog uh, got more uh, starting magazines, because I always seem to run out of ammo with them as to, uh, you know, because to balance their power with the bigger round, uh, they had fewer magazines to start with, and I just think that was a very bad decision, because, you know, you always uh, seem to run, run out of ammo a lot sooner with these guns. Uh, the Scout Elite and the FYJS now have a bit more ammo than the regular damage bolt-action rifles. Uh, 338 Magnum bolt-action rifles have a bit less, uh, the SR338 rate of fire increased uh, was increased to improve performance and match animations better, going from 150 to 200 rounds per minute. Uh, the burst fire was removed. Uh, the burst fire option was removed from the MTAR, as it's not available in the real uh, life. Uh, Semi-auto added on the LSAT. And burst fire was added to the PK uh, to the RPK-12 and the QBB-951. And also some very welcome news: the shotguns finally saw some love. And God damn it, if it you know a year has passed with these things being broken and horribly inconsistent, which in a competitive game is just you know a terrible, terrible decision. Alright, so the shotgun pellet count was increased and the pellet dispersion decreased for more consistent performance and better balance. Uh, the buckshot now has a 2.4 degree cone on all shotguns 
and the flesh shots have a 2.0 degree cone. Now, the pellet cone does not change when firing. This includes the XM25 dart and the M26. Now, let me be back up here a second and read that last sentence. The pellet cone does not change when firing. I've waited for this a goddamn year for this good news. Also, uh, see my How Dice bro Broke Shotguns video for more ranting on the shotgun subject, if you wish. Uh, the flesh shot and the bug shot damage was tweaked to keep an overall maximum damage at the same levels while increasing the number of pellets in a shell, namely 8.4 max and 4.2 minimum damage for the flesh shot and 11.2 maximum and 5.6 minimum for a buckshot pellet. Uh, the flesh shot and buckshot damage drop-off ranges were improved to 25 to 50 meters now, which is one of the best pieces of news I've heard in a while. Uh, close up, the shotguns were terrible, and uh, their damage drop-off usually started at around 12 to 18 meters before, and well, dropped off at 18 meters. And slugs from uh, pump action shotguns will now do 100 max damage and drop off uh, to 45 between 15 and 60 meters, which is above in both damage and effective range, since uh, before the slugs were not able, uh, were not one hit wonders like they were in Battlefield 3, and uh, its drop off damage usually was 12 to 15 meters, so right there that's very good news and they also reduced the DMR headshot damage multiplier to 2.0 and the default zeroing on um, suppressed weapons uh, will now read 75 meters on the HUD since a subsonic bullet uh, drops over range much more so uh, thanks for watching please rate and share this video as it helps my channel grow check out my other videos at the end of this one and remember in Soviet Russia, YouTube subscribes you.